What is the main focus of the paper, based on the introduction section? The main focus of the paper, based on the introduction section, is to localize the weights and internal mechanisms involved in the memorization of paragraphs by language models. Specifically, the GPT-NEO-125M model trained on the PILE dataset. The paper aims to identify memorized paragraphs by defining them as sequences of 100 tokens where the model's greedy decoding of the next 50 tokens exactly matches the true paragraph continuation, given a prefix of 50 tokens. The study delves into differences in how memorized and non-memorized paragraphs are processed by the model, measuring the effect of perturbing individual tokens in a paragraph's prefix on the model's memorization. Additionally, the paper explores the localization of memorization triggers, the impact of perturbing memorized paragraphs, and the differences in parameter gradients for memorized and non-memorized paragraphs. The paper also discusses the use of a contrastive objective to fine-tune the model and localize relevant parameters for editing and unlearning memorized paragraphs. How are memorized paragraphs defined in the context of this study? Memorized paragraphs in this study are defined as any sequence of 100 tokens. A paragraph is considered memorized if, given a prefix of 50 tokens, the model's greedy decoding of the next 50 tokens exactly matches the true paragraph continuation. This definition is used to identify paragraphs that have been memorized by the language model, specifically the GPT-NEO-125M model, trained on the PILE dataset. The study focuses on localizing the weights and internal mechanisms involved in the memorization of paragraphs by analyzing differences in how memorized and non-memorized paragraphs are processed by the model. The study also perturbs individual tokens in a paragraph's prefix to measure the effect on the model's memorization, further refining the definition and understanding of memorized paragraphs in the context of the research. What dataset was the GPT-NEO-125M model trained on? The GPT-NEO-125M model was trained on the PILE dataset, which is an aggregation of 22 different datasets, comprising 825 gigabytes of English text and code. For the study discussed in the paper, a post-processed subset of the PILE dataset containing 10,000 randomly sampled, unique 100-token paragraphs was used. This subset was provided by the authors of the paper and underwent pre-processing steps to ensure a diverse set of paragraphs for analysis. The most frequent paragraph in this subset occurred 40,382 times in the PILE dataset. The PILE dataset allowed for checking model generations against its training data and has been extensively used to study the memorization behavior of language models like GPT-NEO-125M. How are memorized paragraphs distinguished from non-memorized paragraphs in terms of exact match, M, and negative log likelihood, NLL? Memorized paragraphs are distinguished from non-memorized paragraphs based on exact match, M, and negative log likelihood, NLL. Specifically, memorized paragraphs exhibit a perfect M score of 50, meaning that the model's greedy decoding exactly matches the true paragraph continuation for all 50 tokens. On the other hand, non-memorized paragraphs have an EM score ranging from 0 to 10, indicating that there are mismatches between the model's greedy decoding and the true continuation within the first 50 tokens. Additionally, in terms of NLL, memorized paragraphs show lower NLL values compared to non-memorized paragraphs. This implies that the model is more confident and accurate in generating the next 50 tokens for memorized paragraphs, leading to lower NLL scores. Non-memorized paragraphs, on the other hand, have higher NLL values, indicating that the model is less certain and accurate in predicting the continuation of these paragraphs. What is the contrastive objective used in the paper, and how does it differ from traditional fine-tuning objectives? The contrastive objective used in the paper aims to change the memorized continuations of memorized paragraphs, MPS, while preserving the model's continuations of non-memorized paragraphs, NMPS. 
This objective is designed to increase the negative log likelihood, NLL, of an individual memorized paragraph and decrease the callback Liebler, KL, divergence from the model's original continuations of a batch of NMPS. The key difference between the contrastive objective and traditional fine-tuning objectives is that the contrastive objective focuses on altering the memorized content while keeping the non-memorized content unchanged, thus providing a more targeted approach to modifying the model's behavior specifically related to memorization. Traditional fine-tuning objectives typically aim to optimize the model's performance on a general task without specifically targeting memorized information or making a clear distinction between memorized and non-memorized data. Which model component stands out in the analysis of activation gradients and attention patterns? The model component that stands out in the analysis of activation gradients and attention patterns is attention head 2 in layer 1. This specific head shows distinctive behavior by attending predominantly to rare or distinctive tokens in the long tail of the unigram token distribution. The activation gradients and attention patterns analysis reveal that head 2 in layer 1 is particularly active and anti-correlated with other heads, focusing on tokens like subscribe, Washington, email, and offers, instead of more common tokens like punctuation marks and stop words. This unique behavior of attention head 2 in layer 1 suggests its vital role in memorizing paragraphs by paying attention to rare tokens, which aligns with the hypothesis that the model creates a signature of each paragraph based on its rare words to recall memorized information during training. How is the parameter gradient attribution score computed in the paper? The parameter gradient attribution score is computed in the paper by first feeding a batch of paragraphs to the language model and calculating the negative log likelihood, NLL loss for tokens 50 to 100. Then, the parameter gradients are computed with respect to the loss. The absolute gradient value for all individual weights is considered, and the maximum value per layer and component is chosen to obtain the parameter gradient attribution score. This score helps in understanding the importance of different model parameters in the memorization process. The paper presents the mean parameter gradient attribution scores for a batch of memorized paragraphs, MPS, and a batch of non-memorized paragraphs, NMPS, showing clear differences in gradient flow between the two sets. The parameter gradient attribution score is crucial in identifying how the model processes memorized and non-memorized paragraphs differently at the parameter level, providing insights into the internal mechanisms of memorization in language models. What is the significance of perturbing prefix tokens in the study? Perturbing prefix tokens in the study is significant, because it helps to understand where interventions disrupt memorization the most in a language model. By perturbing every token in the prefix one at a time and observing the model's response in generating the next 50 tokens, researchers can measure the impact of these perturbations in terms of negative log likelihood, NLL, and exact match, M metrics. This process reveals that certain distinctive tokens, even early in the prefix, can lead to a significant drop in M, indicating their importance in the model's memorization process. Additionally, studying the perturbed continuations of memorized paragraphs, PMPS, shows that the model can still generate syntactically and semantically valid alternatives, highlighting the robustness of the language model's understanding and generation capabilities. Overall, Perturbing prefix tokens provides insights into how specific tokens influence the model's memorization and generation processes, shedding light on the mechanisms involved in paragraph memorization by the language model. What is the role of attention head 2 in layer 1, according to the findings? The role of attention head 2 in layer 1, according to the findings, is that it attends predominantly to distinctive or rare tokens in the long tail of the unigram token distribution. This head is particularly active and somewhat anti-correlated with the other heads. 
It shows a large gradient attribution for tokens that are unique or rare, such as subscribe, Washington, email, or offers, rather than common tokens like punctuation marks and stop words. The attention patterns of HEAD2 indicate a focus on tokens that are less frequent in the corpus, suggesting that rare tokens play a crucial role in memorization. This HEAD is identified as the one most strongly correlated with rare tokens, implying that it may help the model create a unique signature for each paragraph based on its rare words, which could then be used as a query to recall memorized paragraphs during training. How do the findings suggest that unlearning is easier than editing memorized paragraphs? The findings suggest that unlearning is easier than editing memorized paragraphs based on the experiments conducted in the paper. When perturbing tokens in the prefix of memorized paragraphs, it was observed that a few distinctive tokens, even at early positions, could lead to a significant drop in the exact match, M metric of up to 45. This indicates that disrupting memorization through token perturbations is relatively straightforward. Additionally, the perturbed prefix continuations of memorized paragraphs were mostly syntactically and semantically valid, serving as alternative paraphrases, which aligns with the notion that unlearning is easier than editing. The study also found that optimizing a randomly selected zero. 1% of weights did not achieve the desired result of editing memorized paragraphs into their perturbed alternatives, further supporting the idea that unlearning is a more feasible task. Overall, the results from perturbing tokens and the editing experiments demonstrate that unlearning memorized paragraphs is a more achievable task compared to editing them into their perturbed alternatives.